What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack, aka Mr. Bolo with Simple Man's Comics, and this is The Last Call. So that's right, this is Last Call, where we're going to give our picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this Monday night, June 1st. But before we get into that, last night, you may have noticed on the channel, we brought that Bolo show back. It had been missing for a while with the stop of distribution of comics, but we brought it back, and boy, were we happy to do so, weren't we, Jack? Oh, yeah, real excited. The Bolo show definitely feels like home. It's what kicked off Brian and my partnership. And, you know, when the Bolo show comes back, it means new comics are back. And, of course, if new comics are back, that means we've got to talk final order cutoff right here with the last call show. This is a great week, in my opinion. Brian doesn't see a lot of steak. I see some hidden sizzle. Yeah, there's some sizzle in there, but we're still kind of getting into our groove there with final order cutoff. So it's the list doesn't have the oomph like we normally have it. But either way, we're getting into it right now. Starting with Batman number 93. This is a great one. A lot of people were talking about this book before we had that stop in distribution. But this is a great one also because not only do we have a Matina variant, but we also get that 1 in 25 variant of what character? Well, we're talking about Designer. Designer is the other big character who kind of came in behind Punchline. Hasn't really gotten the same attention as Punchline, but definitely a cool character. Cool character design. We're going to get another one of these, 1 in 25, Jimenez design variants. Uh, this one, is, is, I think, is really cool. This is going to be the book that gets the most attention because, of course, you've got this James Tinian Batman run. You've got Joker War story going on. We've got this Matina uh, cover B, which is definitely going to get a lot of attention. And then this incentive is the one that people have been looking at for a long time. So this is the book that's going to get everybody's eye. But I don't think it's necessarily the pick of the week as far as a uh, book to look for to invest in. But it is one of the books that I'm the most excited to read. One thing I like about that stop in distribution is right before it, when people were mentioning this, they were doing pre-sales and they were way above ratio. Way. I think some of that might have caused some of that com to come down. So check with your LCS, check with your online stores. Maybe you can get that at a better price and no more close to ratio than what they were selling before. Batgirl number 46. This is more of a cover art pick, I'd say, than a story pick. We're talking about that cover B mostly on this one, right? Right. This is, we're getting an Inhyuk Lee Batgirl cover. Now, Inhyuk Lee has become extremely popular, both with his Marvel incentive variants, as well as his kind of cover B work with Marvel, as well as a lot of the stuff that we've seen throughout the retailer exclusive program and he's just another artist in a long line of artists who really made their name doing those exclusives and here he is he's coming in with dc he's going to start doing cover bees which i think is great because a lot of people who are fans of in Lee, they haven't seen him do dc characters and he they haven't been able to get books of his really cheap and attainable as a lot of his books are high ratio or like I mentioned, retail exclusives, which typically have that fifteen to twenty dollar price tag. So this Batgirl cover is like bananas out of the park awesome. And I think that it's gonna get a lot of attention. It's already getting attention pre-FOC, but leading up until the new comic book day for this this given group of books. I think this is going to be the book that you see a lot of people kind of showing off on Instagram. Will it make immediate secondary market impact? Probably not. That's what we've seen with, with these DC books. But great PC pickup and a book that has a chance because there's a lot of Batgirl covers that have really matriculated over time. Next, we get a new ongoing series from Image Comics. We've talked about a lot of Image Comics on the last call show, and we often talk about how, you know, the Image doesn't have the kind of punch behind it that it normally does, but here's one series that I'm actually looking forward to reading. Looks like a great one. I'm glad it's an ongoing. And it's called That Texas Blood Number One. They're also, they're, Image is comparing this to No Country for All Men in Texas, right? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely kind of a a cool kind of southern midwestern vibe. Uh, you think sheriffs and uh, cowboys type thing. And Phillips is a a. Uh, creator who's got a kind of history with image comics and already got a built-in following so it's definitely a book that i think won't be like majorly talked about but sure to deliver quality and could be a good sleeper pick so this is one we definitely want to talk about pre-foc because you know if the demand for this one isn't here before foc it may be a tough grab on new comic book day Next, we're getting back over to the big two with Marvel, and we're talking about Thor number five. Now, this is an issue a lot of people have been looking forward to. We've been leading up to it. We've been teased by it, but Black Winter's here, right? Oh, maybe. I mean, we're talking about Donny Cates here. So everyone was expecting Thor 4 uh, to pay off, and we get kind of a cameo tease. Now, I would expect to get that first full appearance, uh, which almost – you know, it's like acid coming out of my mouth to say first full appearance, but, uh, you know, the market deemed first full appearance in issue five, but you just never know with Donny Cates either way. Of course, if it's, it's new comics and we're talking, whether it's Last Call or the Bolo Show, we're going to be talking Donny Cates. We were talking about him just last night with Venom 25. Any of his kind of big releases that tease new characters, whether we're talking cameo, first full, any sort of changes, any sort of major events, it's definitely going to draw the attention of the market. This one being a big two release, definitely going to be one that people are paying attention to. I would keep an eye out for it for sure. Yeah, make sure you get those pre-orders in before that news cycle hits and the articles start hitting online about it. This next one, it's a little bit different. I'm talking about FOC here, but War of the Realms, we're talking about that omnibus. When War of the Realms was coming out in floppies, we were talking about this on the Bolo Show, on a bunch of other shows on our channel about, hey, like the story not so much digging the tie-ins if it ever releases in an omnibus and has those tie-ins in it i most likely will pick it up well guess what it's here it's hitting foc so that's why we have it in the show i'm excited to pick this up because it has pretty much that entire war of the realm story in one hardbound book yeah, and you got two cover options available to you on this one. You're talking about $125 retail price, but that is why we're talking about it pre-FOC. You may be sitting there saying, well, I can't invest in this book, or this isn't a speculation pick. Of course not. But again, that's not what we're trying to do here. We are trying to give every type of comic book collector, including and especially the reader, uh, the opportunity to pick up books or early, pick up books at the best price, um, secure books that they definitely want in their collection. And as you mentioned, Brian, we've been talking about this. This really applies to any of these crossover series where they start to get crazy. I gave up on War of the Realms. It was just too much. I couldn't follow it. So I knew early on that this omnibus was going to be one I was paying attention to. So no matter if you didn't like War of the Realms, you may not have liked it because you didn't get the opportunity to read it really in the, its best presentation form. So look, we're a Netflix society, sit down and binge read this series. And I think you may feel differently about it. Moving back over to Indies for a minute. This is a publisher that we haven't talked about in quite a while. Still love them, but we're talking about Vault and we're talking about Bleed Them Dry number one. This is like a Japanese vampire type book, but there's more to it than that, isn't there, Jack? Yeah, I mean, you got me at Ninja Vampires right off the gate, but what I'm really excited about is these pulp and paint variants that start off with this book. We get, we've talked in the past about the uh, Vault Vintage variant line and how we really like the way they kind of cultivated a line of variants uh, from the cover design to the cover concept to the back cover style that uh, they even worked with retailers and this pulp and paint project is really cool it's really an homage to these old uh kind of like pulp magazines and uh digests and um the old sci-fi horror kind of look so all of these books have kind of like that distress look they all look like they would be uh cbcs 2.0 or 3.0 um so 
I love the, the fact that they're innovating. They're not, they've got a great thing with this vault vintage line, but they're not resting on their laurels. They created something new. Uh, the, the creative minds of Nathan Gooden and Tim Daniel are at it again, and they're going to have a whole new group of variants. Uh, we've seen already images for some upcoming series like uh, the second series of Vagrant Queen. So I really love that cover here. I think it's an amazing cover. And it's, it's a kind of a variant program I definitely think people should be on the lookout for. Yeah, and we all know last time they did a vampire horror type book, uh, The Savage Shores, we all know how that went. Absolutely. We are sticking with indie books right here. We're going over to Valiant right now with Dr. Tomorrow number three. We talked about Dr. Tomorrow number one on last call, but there's a good reason to talk about number three. Some people are aware of it. Some people might not be, but there's a great variant for this as well, right? Absolutely. And that's the reason why we're talking about it. this book is going to get completely overlooked. Uh, it's a number three issue from Valiant Comics, but like a lot of Valiant Comics, it has a really great regular price variant cover from none other than the hottest number one cover artist in the game, Peach Momoko. And we've seen this happen before where Peach Momoko does a variant cover for kind of a smaller press publisher and it doesn't really get the attention of the market. This is kind of the book that I think maybe of this entire list, entire show that I think has the most potential there's only maybe one more and we're going to get to it next with more potential but this cover b you know there's a lot of people have already looked at that titan comics that uh horizon book that's coming up from pichamoko i've seen so many people post about that but i haven't seen people post about this doctor tomorrow book and that leads me to believe that approaching foc there's a good chance this one will be much more scarce and will be a tough book to find but stay tuned frankiescomics.com on June 3rd at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They are going to drop the Frankie's Comics exclusive virgin cover for this book. And that book is sure to get a lot of attention as well. Yeah, and I think a lot of the reason why that Horizon variant that you're talking about is getting the attention it does because gamer heads, man, because that's one of like the best PlayStation games that, that year that that game came out. And then you add Momoko on top of it. So you got the gamer crowd and then the Momoko frenzy loving that book which could lead to this one being overlooked and just like you said that frankie's one virgin as well be on the lookout for that so then here we have a book from idw with sleeping beauties number one this is a great one because it's also based off the novel right yeah, Brian, you're getting the adaptation of the novel from Stephen King and his son, Owen King. So you've already got that built-in Stephen King fan base with this series right here. But this is not one that we've heard a lot of people talking about. But that's only one reason really to get excited about this book. The other one is the fact that this hits with a trend that, Brian, you and I have been talking about on this channel and specifically on this show uh, for over a year, and that's IDW new release books that feature a one in 25 or greater incentive variant. We just talked about on the Bolo show, the long-term play of the week, the Star Wars uh, Clone Wars Adventures book with the one in 100. This one in 25 is sure to be under ordered because, you know, this an IDW series don't tend to get heavily ordered uh, especially some of these kind of creator-owned titles. And we've seen these 1 in 25s run short on the market. The other thing that kind of stands out is when I was even looking for this book uh, to try to figure out like who's the cover artist and what does the cover art look like, a couple things stuck out to me. Number one, the cover art I really liked. I've never, I'm not familiar with the arts. I'm probably going to butcher the name, but it's like Naneva, uh, N-A-N-E-V-A. Um, but Brian, you and I talked about it. It really reminded us of Monstrous. and yes, that, uh, not Takeda. Yeah. So, and we already know that that art style is very popular. But the other thing is I saw a couple stores who were pre-selling the incentive for this. I saw one was selling it for 40 and it was sold out. And one was selling it for 50 and it was sold out. So maybe there is some word out there that about this book and it's going to be popular. That's double ratio already. So if you have the ability to pre-order this book right now for ratio or less, 
I really think that this is the pick of the entire week of all of these books. That one in 25 variant is the one that I feel the strongest about. Yeah, I like it. Some people say, well, it's a 10 issue maxi series, mini series, what do you want to talk about? Well, that kind of goes out the window one for indie books. And yeah. then also it's an adaptation of a Stephen King freaking novel. So you never know what you're going to get right there. And then right. we always say when IDW has something higher than a one in 10 incentive, definitely picking that up. Yeah, and I also think we've moved beyond the fear of uh, mini or maxi series. We've moved into kind of the land of these Mignolaverse style multi-volume uh, releases. So I think we got to move beyond those fears. I think you're right. Let's focus on that positive with that 1 in 25 variant. That thing is fire. And make sure you remember, we told you guys about this one pre-FOC. So there it is, guys. Those are our picks for books out and final or cutoff this coming Monday night, June 1st. Make sure you get those orders in before 10 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to see that full final order cutoff list, head on over to simplemanscomics.com. Not only for the list, but for some great articles as well. We've, we've overhauled the website. We're putting more articles up there. So we're putting a lot more content, not just on YouTube now, but there's some stuff over there you might want to check out as well. Right, Jack? Oh, yeah, definitely. You got entertainment news, toy news. Comic news, a lot of great content. It's uh, definitely worth checking out, simplemanscomics.com. So those guys, that's the last call for tonight. This is Brian and Jack, and we'll see you guys in the next video.